Good morning, Steel Academy students. The science class today, we're going to be talking about matter and energy. It is April 7th, Mr. Ball. If you need me, you can email me at nball at steelacademyedu.org. So today we're going to be talking about matter and energy. So what we're going to be doing is looking at mass, volume, density. So when we look at this, I always like to look at the end to see, you know, what's important to do? What's the lesson review? Because that's going to have the important parts of the lesson. So you're going to have to fill in the blank with the term that best comply, uh, completes the following sentence. So that's going to be some vocabulary there. There are also going to be some key concepts. You're going to have to say, is air matter? You'll have to describe, is it possible for an object's weight to change while its mass remains consistent? And then you'll also have to explain why a golf ball is heavier than a table tennis ball. I bet that has something to do with either mass, density, or volume. All right. So let's head on back to the start here. The first thing we're going to talk about is matter. So as you guys read this, I'll read some parts with you just to help you out. I'll read some important parts, maybe highlight a couple things. Who knows? We'll have some fun with it. So we're looking at what is matter. What I'm going to do, just to take quick notes while you guys have probably already read this, hopefully. You'll look at matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Your body's matter, the air that you breathe, and the water that you drink are also matter. Matter makes up the materials around you. However, not everything is matter. Light and sound, for example, are not matter. Light does not take up space or have mass in the same way that a table does. Although air is matter, a sound traveling through air is not so that's interesting. Kind of objects are matter, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, let's see. Let's move on to mass. Matter, mass, obviously related. Mass it just describes the amount of matter in an object. So mass is something that really gives you a reading or a measurement on how much matter is in something. So now we're going to look at comparing the two balloons on the right. You can see that this balloon and this balloon, they're made of the same size balloon. However, the one on the right has 0 0.010 grams. This one has 0 0.005 grams. So this one has more mass. The reason this is, that's actually because of the air in it. The air is made of matter. So it's going to have more mass if a balloon's filled with um, more matter. Now we have to learn, coming down to this one, how mass is different from weight. So if you ever heard someone say, does my mass change if I travel from planet to planet? Which that'd be cool if you guys got to do that sometime. Not sure if I can plan a field trip on that or not, so... We'll have to wait and see. But when it comes to mass differing from weight, mass and weight do both differ. However, they're related. So let's look at weight. Weight, it's a measure of the gravitational force of on an object. So it depends on something else. Mass is important in it. But we haven't really covered this yet. Gravitational force is the pull between two objects. So two objects matter in it. So the planet you're on and you. Earth's bigger than Mars. So you're going to weigh more on Earth than you would on Mars. Now we're going to go over to measuring mass and weight. 
So this right here, you may have used or seen these in my class already. This is a balance. <clears throat> Excuse me. I forgot to take my uh, allergy pills the last couple days. So my allergies are acting up right now. Mass is often measured by using a triple beam balance, such as the one shown above. The balance compares an object's mass to known standards of mass called countermasses. The countermasses slide across the three beams. When the countermasses balance the mass of the object in the balance pan, the pointer will rest at zero. Then the mass can be read from the position of the countermasses on the beam. Basically, what it's saying is if we weigh one thing on this side, another thing on the, this side, we don't know what this thing is, but we know this thing is, and they're even, they weigh the both the same. They have the same mass to them. So that's really the concept there. <clears throat> it's looking at known masses, known weights, and measuring them against each other. Then weight is measured with devices such as a spring scale, shown to the left here. So that's this guy. You may have seen this at like stores or something like that to measure fruit. The spring measures the force between the mass in the pan and earth. The more mass of the object placed in the pan, the more forceful is the attraction between it and the earth. And the more the spring will stretch. Greater stretch means greater weight. Because weight is a measure of gravitational force, it is given in units of force. You probably are most familiar with given, weight given in pounds, like the units on the scale. However, a standard scientific unit for weight is the Newton. I think there's a famous scientist named Newton. So, I mean, that makes sense, right? A 100 gram mass weighs approximately one Newton on Earth. One Newton is about one fourth of a pound. So there you go. There are some conversion, conversion factors there for you. It's interesting having to go back from metric to standard. So metric is that uh, like meters, centimeters, grams that a lot of the world uses. It's a scale based on base 10. So you pretty much just move over a decimal point, changing from centimeter to millimeter. There are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. There are 100 centimeters in a decimeter. Excuse me, 10 centimeters in a decimeter. 10 decimeters in a meter. So it's an easy scale to convert with. You just move decimal points. Using the U.S.'s uh, standard, having inch, 12 inches to a foot, three feet to a yard, 5,280 feet to a mile, those are a little bit tougher, just a little bit to remember, but it's still conversion. As you get farther along in math, You'll learn how to use conversions, and it'll be really, really simple for you guys to do that. So now we're going to look at volume. How is the amount of space occupied by matter measured? All matter takes up space. The amount of space that an object takes up or occupies is known as the object's volume. Objects with small, similar volume do not always have the same mass. In the photos, the bowling ball and the balloon have about the same volume, but the bowling ball contains a lot more mass than the balloon. You know this because the bowling ball weighs much more than the balloon. The different masses take up about the same amount of space, so both objects have about the same volume. So, that makes sense because, well, this bowling ball right here is going to have much more weight this balloon is much lighter. They're both on Earth. So that aspect of weight 
cancels each other out. When you're comparing two things on Earth, you can just talk about weight and mass almost interchangeably. But mass is the measure of matter and not weight. Anyway, when we get there tomorrow, we're going to start looking at this part. How can volume be determined? So, don't hold your breath. We'll get to that tomorrow. Look forward to talking to you guys then.